how will we identify solution 1 uh, as solution 1 contained uh, glucose and starch so what you'll do is you'll do the starch test so the starch test is uh, you add iodine solution which is brown in color and if it turns blue black of course that means uh, starch is present if it remained brown it means starch is not present now so you'll divide solution 1 into two uh, parts you put it in two separate test tubes and uh, one you can label A and the other you can label so this is A and this is B and you've taken uh, this sample so sample 1 you've taken so I've labeled that S1 so you've taken the sample which I've colored in red so you've taken a certain volume of it in both the test tubes in one test tube you will add iodine solution and you will not heat or anything and you will just look at the color change if the color changes to a blue black color then that means it was brown originally the iodine and if it changes to a blue black color that means that uh, starch is present so of course uh, but then you know that there's another solution which also has starch so now you will have to identify which one is that so in sample one in the first one when you add the iodine the starch uh, test will be positive and then you will do uh, the reducing sugar test in which what you do is you add uh, you take the sample same volume and you add Benedict solution the same volume and then of course you heat in a water bath and you heat it at anything between 80 and 100 degrees Celsius and you heat that for two minutes and then you see the color change now if the color in this solution because it contains glucose and I haven't given you the percentage of glucose so it will turn from a blue color it will turn to an orange color or a brick red or any other color because the glucose is not being specified but it will not remain blue so this doing these two tests uh, will tell you whether it is sample one or not I mean if you do the protein test that will be negative if you do the fat test that will also be negative <coughs> sample two again you will take in uh, two test tubes you will add the sample and uh, you will add biuret reagent and please remember there's no heating the color will change to a purple if protein is present so that will identify because if you did that with sample one there would be no color change now with the second and the same sample two you take another test tube and you add benedict solution and you will see the color change either it will change to green or orange because it depends upon how much of the glucose is present i did not specify the glucose uh, in, in a final uh, test that you will have I will be specifying the concentrations of glucose so you have to understand is that the sample 2 as it contained only two ingredients which is glucose and protein so we will only do two tests on it and of course but you see I'm not telling you how we would do the test on all the five solutions that's a separate story so what we need to understand is that in doing sample 2 I'm just telling it to you individually and then I'll tell you the final one how you had to do uh, all of them Uh, in sample 3 we have glucose sucrose and starch now if you perform the iodine test that of course will be very very clear and categoric that from brown it will turn to uh, blue black so this brown will become blue black the whole thing will become blue black so that proves that iodine uh, that starch with the iodine is a test which decides whether the starch is present or not so that would tell you so the sample was divided into three portions and three test tubes a b c so sample three into three a three b and three c so we have three a three b and three c you must always label test tubes when you're doing this in the lab and in one you will put iodine and then now you're left with B and C. Now in the B and C you also have sample 3. In sample in B you have added Benedict's and you heat. The same story which I'm not doing again and again. So you will heat in a water bath. And you will see the color change. The color change will be uh, maybe yellow or orange or any color like that. <clears throat> but the important thing which you have to understand is the C sample now contains what? It contains glucose as well as sucrose so now initially if we had 100 glucose now the sucrose is being hydrolyzed by the HCl into maybe another 50 glucose and 50 fructose so we originally had 100 glucose now you have more of the reducing sugar now when more of the reducing sugar so now the second the, in the C test tubes 
the color is going to be a darker shade with the Benedict solution. So you're going to add HCl, you're going to heat it so that the sucrose is hydrolyzed to glucose and fructose. The sucrose is a disaccharide, it is hydrolyzed to glucose and fructose. Now you have the glucose, the initial glucose be heavy. Or up was sucrose be apne, you've broken it down into glucose and fructose. So now you have say 100 of the glucose, 50 of the glucose and 50 of the fructose. So now you have nearly 200 reducing sugar. So now the next time the color will be a darker color than test tube B. Please understand this. It has to be a darker shade because the initial glucose is also reacting with the Benedict's. Or ab aapne chunke HCl, you've added the HCl, so you've also hydrolyzed the sucrose. So you now have more reducing sugar. So please understand this, is that in this sample 3, you'll have to do the test 3 times. Number 1, first with the iodine, then with the Benedict's, which will only react with the glucose. And the third time, then you'll add the HCl now to a separate sample. You will sample up here. In a separate sample, you will then add HCl, heat, add the alkali, add Benedict's, and now the color will be a dark shade of the Benedict's of the reducing sugar test. Now sample 4 and 5 is the most critical one because in which you have glucose is present in both, but the sucrose concentration is different. One has 1% 1 sucrose and one has 5% sucrose. So initially when you do the Benedict's with both of them, sample 4 and 5, it will give you one color. Say it gives you uh, a green color. So the glucose, the positive test is that it gives you a green shade. In this also and in this also. That's because the glucose is reacting. So the Benedict solution changes from blue to a green shade. So that means the glucose is present in both. You have to prove it to me. Okay, now, sample four, now you take in a separate test tube. First of all, you've done the Benedict's test, that you've thrown away. Now you take sample four again in another test tube. And now you add HCl, heat, you add alkali, and you add the Benedict solution. And now you heat. The same thing you do here. HCl, heat, alkali, and then the Benedict's and heat. Now the main thing is the final color. The final color might be a brick red in both. But you might say, okay, uh, no miss, it's a darker brick red in this. It's a darker brick red in this, it's a lighter brick red in this. Now I don't agree with that because that's something which is very, very, you know, you're just looking at it and you're saying. Now what you have to understand is that brick red is a precipitate. So what will we do? We'll take a test tube. We'll take a beaker, sorry, and we'll take a funnel. And in this funnel, we will add a filter paper. And then we will put that solution here. And what you will find is that the brick red precipitate settles out on the filter paper. And then what are you going to give me? You're going to give me the mass of the precipitate. You will give me the mass of the precipitate. Now, so you can understand that this will have, this will has only 1% sucrose. So this will have less mass of the precipitate. This will have more mass of the precipitate. So what you have to do is that you have to, how would you measure the mass of the precipitate? Is that you take a beaker and place a funnel on top of it and you pour that solution here onto this. Now this is the filter paper. And what will happen is that the precipitate will sort of settle out on that filter paper and then you need to scrape it off and you need to put it on a weighing balance, on a digital weighing balance and then you calculate and give me the mass of the precipitate. You see the more the sucrose, 
more the mass of the precipitate more the sucrose more the mass of the precipitate so in order to dis to find out which one is which which one has 1% sucrose and which one has 5% sucrose you will have to give me the mass of the precipitate okay now this was the answer to this now there will of course be uh, another there that you will have to do it as a test i want everybody uh, listening to this video pausing it and listening to it and then writing down your queries if you have any questions and you've not understood something please write that down and then get back to me on monday and inshallah uh, we'll figure this out together thank you